Today we're going to take a look at importing data from a CSV file into ShareWell. So I'm in the admin tool. This is where our database functions are done. The exporting of data, the importing of data, the creation of a ZAR file, which is a full backup of the system, setting up external imports, importing your AD, importing your knowledge. But for today, we're going to take a look at importing data from a CSV file. So I'm going to use a sample of a CSV that I exported from the incident subcategory table. If I go to settings, take a look at table management, and then navigate to the incident subcategory table. We can see there's 85 records in here. Here's all the subcategories. So what I did a moment ago is I went to database, export, I navigated to the incident subcategory table and then I browsed to where I want to put that file which was on my desktop and then I just ran an export. What I could do then is take that data, open that CSV in something like Excel, and manipulate the data. If it's a small data set, you know, 10, 20 records, maybe you could just do it quickly by hand right within ShareWell. But if you get into bigger record sets, if you can't have direct access to SQL to manipulate that data, you can export any table from ShareWell out to CSV, manipulate the data in Excel, and then import that right back in again. So what I did was I took that CSV file, dropped it into Excel, and I prepended the word my in front of all the subcategories. And now all I have to do is go and import that data. So I'm going to point at run a one-off data import. That opens up my data wizard. I'm going to click on next. I'm going to browse to where I dropped that CSV file that I want to import. In this case, I named it my incident subcategory. I'm going to open the CSV. Then I have to tell ShareWell the object where I want to import that data into. So I'm going to hit the drop down and find my incident subcategory table. Click Next. And you'll notice that ShareWell is going to try to map those fields correctly for me based on the column names in the spreadsheet or in the CSV file. So if these names were a little bit different, they wouldn't match up, but then you can go ahead and use the action to take section to actually map the incoming field to the correct field in the target database. And maybe there's fields you don't want to import. So maybe I don't want to import the action command. So I could say do not import. Don't import the action command name perhaps. Don't import the keywords perhaps. So you've got control over which fields you want to import into the target database. Let me click on back here. Actually I'm going to cancel and re-import so it remaps my fields correctly. Next, browse to my file, hit the drop down, and go navigate to the incident subcategory table. Click on Next. Click on Next again. This next window allows us to basically concatenate fields together so I can build set values. So let's say this was data for the customer table. And I had a first name field and a last name field, but I didn't have full name data in that spreadsheet. Now full name is a required field in ShareWell. So I could click on Add here and I could say concatenate columns from a file and I'll click on Add. So let's assume that this is the first name field. Click Add again and this is the last name field. So that would build these two fields together with a space between them and actually build my uh, full name field and then I could point at up here the field to populate with that data. So let's assume this was the full name field in the customer table. So that would take the first space last, build it, and populate that into the full name field correctly in ShareWell. I'm actually going to skip this section here for this particular example. I'm going to click Next. Now this is important. Delete existing data from incident subcategory business object before import. If I don't do that, as you recall I had 85 entries originally when I did the export, if I don't check that box I'm going to have double that. I'm going to have 170 subcategories because it's going to just append the data from the CSV file into that table. Now that's providing I don't have a unique index on one of those fields. If I had a unique index on say the um, 
the rec ID field or the subcategory field, then of course I would get a whole bunch of errors and it wouldn't import those duplicates. For this example, I want to clean it all out and just re-import all 85 of those values with the word my prepended at the beginning. So I'm going to click on delete, I'll click on next, and on this last screen here it tells you what it's going to do and it allows you to test the import. So I'm going to click on test here and it ran through and said all 85 of those records are going to come in just fine. Now before I actually do the import, take a look at this check in the bottom left corner. Save this as a stored import. If I do that, it allows me to name this import and then I could run it over and over again. So let me do that. I'm going to say incident subcat import. And I'll click on the import button. It ran all 85 successfully. Now since I saved that import, I could go to my stored import definition manager. So there's my incident subcategory stored import. I could right click and edit this or I could click on the pencil to edit. And that just walks me back through the wizard of the import that I had built previously. So now I could run this guy over and over again. I could create a scheduled job that would go and pull this data in every night. So a good example of that might be a PeopleSoft data. So the PeopleSoft folks won't let you have direct access to that database, so they insist that they're going to drop a CSV file every night for you. So you could build this stored import definition and then schedule that every night. So assuming that the PeopleSoft folks drop a fresh CSV every night, you could schedule this right after their drop and pull that data into something like the customer table. So let me close this window and then let's take a look at table management. I'm going to go to settings, table management, and let's take a look at that data that I pulled in. So I'll go to incident subcategory and there's all my subcats that are prepended with the word my and I only have 85 of them because I chose to delete the existing ones before I did the import. So that's a quick look at importing a CSV file into ShareWell. Thank <laughs> you.